Today's guest is someone I'm always excited to talk to. His positivity is infectious and he always manages to say one or two things that I end up carrying with me. One such thing two years ago led me to change the way I look at fitness and has so far resulted in nearly 20 pounds of weight loss. I could have easily included our full talk, nearly one and a half hours worth. If you're interested in hearing the full version in the form of a podcast, please let me know in the comment section below. Juan Do is an award-winning inspirational speaker, author, and city finalist in NBC's hit show, American Ninja Warrior. Recognized as the best youth mentor by the International Examiner, Juan travels across North America speaking at colleges, high schools, and conferences where he shares practical strategies to help people become resilient during challenging times. Sit back and enjoy my chat with Juan Do. Your work obviously entails a fair bit of travel. So what are you doing for sanity purposes lately? Yeah. So since I'm not traveling on airplanes and speaking at conferences and at events, now a lot for me is just kind of going back to basics. I mean, for me, I realize where it changes, you need to have some form of routine or just normalcy, but you have to be proactive in doing it. So for me, like every morning, I, ha I have a morning routine where I wake up. First thing I do is I think about all things I'm grateful for, literally from my eyes that can see, my ears can hear, my beating heart that can feel. I then go through different areas of my life, uh, my wife, my parents' health, her parents, brothers, siblings, all of that. And then I go through different goals. And after that, I listen to some music. Put me in a good mood. I do some reading. What type of music do you listen to in the morning for your your morning routine? And and yeah, do you listen to music at the same time as you read, or are you just you know music then reading? Yeah. So for me personally, I'm a type of person where I can literally listen to the same song over and over and over again because it has okay. meaning to me. And there's different okay. stages in my life where it has a certain meaning. So for me personally, I listen to worship music. So the the song I listen to, I always start with is a song called lord i need you and yeah. pretty much it's not about me and so after i play that song i go through a list of other songs i like i know one that i've liked for a long time is by an artist her name is mandisa she's on american idol years years back which is a song okay. called overcomer right and it's those type of music that helps you to for me it's changing the playlist in our heads because oftentimes especially during this time we can have this negative self-talk where i use horrible whack songs that will help put us down oh it's, there's no way you can make it out of this it's too tough look on the news and it's going to fill your head so we have to constantly change that playlist in our head and so by listening to that music affirmations those type of things it helps me to constantly flood them good things so i primarily listen to worship music and then okay. sometimes i'll interact it in with different type of uh current trend music that i like that'll help me feel good laugh make me dance yeah. that type of thing okay Okay. Is, um, is your exercise part of your, your morning routine? My exercise is not. I, no. um, I, okay. it used to be, it used to be like, oh, I work out in the morning. Um, but now I, I do it uh, at night and primarily cause I, I, I usually exercise with my wife. It's just feed my mind with good stuff because what I've come to realize, like to use the metaphor of a garden where you don't have to put any effort. Weeds will automatically grow on its own. And if it grow, and if you are not careful or intentional, they will take over your garden. So you have to constantly put in the effort. They rip all of them out and plant flowers and the things that you want. And in this environment, it's the same thing with the news, where a news outlet, it's unfortunate where a lot of people will click and watch when it's something bad or not enjoyable versus something good. It's like when you see a car accident on the road, everyone stops and looks. Yeah. And that's what I've noticed myself. I was like in at different moments throughout the last month, I realized I was in and out and I went aware of like, wait a minute, this is not good. I don't feel good. That's why I was like, you know what, I gotta make conscious of ripping out weeds and putting even more seeds in to fill my mind with good stuff so that I can continue to progress moving forward. I was listening to this two hour training today and I thought this person put it very well where he used um, the five stages of grieving. Mm. You know, the stage is denial then yeah. you go to anger depression 
bargaining and then acceptance. Yeah. Throughout this time period, I realized with her, myself, and just everyone I contract with, we go through phases. Sometimes you take two steps forward and you go a step back. Mm -hmm. But regards to business and just, I think, in life, mm -hmm. is once you get through and get to accept, that's when you can decide to constantly move forward. But mm -hmm. if you're in the denial phase of like, oh, this isn't happening, or like, oh my gosh, the government should be doing so much more to help us out. If you're stuck in denial, anger, depression, then you're just stuck within your emotions. You can't do anything. And for me, I feel like rather than forcing ourselves to have this positive attitude, oh, it's going to be okay, it's this, it's having an honest attitude. Like if you feel nervous, go and be nervous. If you're scared, be scared because it's like a soda can. If you keep picking it up and you don't release that carbonation, that tension side, eventually it's going to explode. That's what happens to too many people. So once you acknowledge how you feel and do healthy outlet, like journaling, talking with family, with friends, you get out of your system, that will help you to progress along those stages so that you come to a place, you know what, this is what's happened. What can I control? What can I control? So I can't control myself, what I put in my mind, and what I'm going to do moving forward. So I've noticed with her and myself and all the friends I talk to is like, everyone kind of gravitates, but once you make that conscious decision, you know what, this is the reality. This is the new norm. You know, this is what I'm going to do about it. And you take one step at a time each day, you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've always liked about you. You know, I mean, you, you have a way of, um, of, of spinning. Uh, and I don't want to say spin, because I think the word spin has a negative connotation to it. But it's, uh, you have a way of reframing um, realities, because you can look at two things right they're in they're, they're they're the same reality but mm -hmm. you can look at them with a different lens and you can choose to focus on the negative aspects of that same reality or the positive aspects yeah. of that same reality but you're looking at the same thing you always have had uh, in my opinion um that gift of reframing everything you look at in a positive light which is why I, you know obviously i very much respect you and what you do um, because of that and uh I, I think it takes a, a, a special person. I don't think just anybody can do that. Um, so, so well, I appreciate kind words, you. and um, this is what it, it's a muscle. Yeah, and that's what I realized because uh, I tell you, like, if we were talking at this point last year, I was at a very different place in life, where I had a lot through challenges. Right, as a kid growing up, I went through suicidal thoughts. We had a family member that had a huge gambling debt over eight years that almost ripped my family apart, um, going into massive debt for the business and climbing out of it, working at not so fun jobs like telemarketing, door knocking, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and last year, it, it, it beats all those three things combined times 10. But mm -hmm. what I've come to realize, and for me, just personal growth, is every stage in life you go through, it helps prepare you for the next stage where, like, for example, like, for me, my lens is a lot on marriage because I'm a year and a half into it. And I realized, dude, this is the most important relationship I have. This is my number one priority. Then the kids will come and all that. But like marriage, what I learned was it's a vehicle to help you go from being a selfless single person to be a more selfless individual. And what happens is when kids come, guess what? They help stretch you even more to be selfless because it's not about you. But if you didn't have that marriage and then the kids came, then all of a sudden it's more of like a curveball out of left field. You're not as prepared so it's kind of like building blocks it just helps you to the next level yeah i kind of uh i kind of see kids um as a magnifying glass for your relationship if things are really good they will enhance that and they will you know mm -hmm. give you exponential happiness within that relationship yeah. if things are bad they will do the exact same thing, but on the opposite <laughs> end of that spectrum. Well, I mean, very well if said. You, if, if your marriage and your 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 marital relationship is not in good shape when that first baby comes along, um, that is a huge stress uh, on mm -hmm. an already stressed situation. That um, yeah, uh, it, it 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 doesn't make things better. <laughs> right yeah it, well said it is not the panacea to uh to a bad relationship uh, unfortunately yeah. we met at strategic coach uh which for those of us you know for those of watching uh, don't know it's an entrepreneurial coaching forum um i know what brought me there what brought you there 
Yeah. So to kind of give context, right? So I knew that I'll be traveling the world speaking and making a difference that way. And I remember discovering that when I was 17 in high school. And when I went to college, I met a mentor and he is one of the top 100 financial planners in the entire United States. He has like three quarters of a billion dollars in their assets. Mm-hmm. And I talked to him. I really resonated with him. And he talked about, oh yeah, one program that really impacted my, my business and my life at the beginning was strategic coach. And then I met another mentor in college. He referenced the same thing. And I'm thinking, oh man, I, I want to one day be a part of this. And then literally every person I had meet, I met afterwards maybe three or four people that would always reference strategic coach. Mm-hmm. And so with that mind, it's like these people use strategic coach. I respect them. They're highly successful, not only from a business point of view, but from a personal point of view. Let me check this out. So I knew I reached a point where I said, you know what? I like to, uh, it's time. I, I wanted to take it to the next level. So that's what brought me into strategic coach. Okay. So is it, is it fair to say that um, you didn't really know what you were getting into? You just were opening your mind to the possibilities that it could bring you based on the trust that you had in these people that referenced it. And you thought, okay, well, if, if it worked for them, as long as I'm open to it, it's going to work for me. I don't know how it's going to work for me. I just, I know it's going to be amazing. Yeah. A big part of it was, just, oh man, because you did it. I want to do it. I did attend a, a free workshop in Seattle, Washington. It was like a three hour sample. Yeah. And then they gave me their, uh, their tapes, right? Mm-hmm. They, they went through a long time ago. So I listened to the tapes. I got the concepts, but there's a huge difference when like you, you watch something online. Let's say you do a tutorial on like how to fix something around the house. Right, you do it. You're like, hey, this does not look exactly that easy as the YouTube video. Mm-hmm. But if you had someone there next to you, all of a sudden it'd be a different experience. And I think that's where actually when going to Street Coach, when we met and had that experience, like, wow, this is so much better than just reading a book. You just have hands-on experience and and sharing it with other people as well. I I know that you were a competitor on American Ninja Warrior. I don't know to what extent. So can you tell me about that experience? Yeah, I it started off because I my goal was to be on national television. Okay. I put it out there, and I, I, I was. Caught, I, I don't like, know like, if doing this video series with me is going to help that goal. By the way, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> now we so I had that goal, and I was at my cousin's CrossFit gym in Washington State, and I was climbing his wall, and his business partner took a picture of me. And he posted it on social media saying Juan Doe. Uh, beast in the peg wall hashtag american ninja warrior and at that moment i thought oh yeah why not so i just googled american ninja warrior and it was like audition video create a three minute video sharing your story and we put a lot of effort and time into it and uh fortunately we were selected i competed on the show and we have a little five second clip on the show so it worked out so i never had a goal to compete on american ninja warrior it was just the way to be on national television but it was a an incredible experience um, that I had to, to go through. Well, I was involved in athletics. Uh, yeah. I just I was like, oh, okay, oh, I can apply. I can do this. And it's like, oh, this goal can help meet this goal. And yeah. I think the, the beauty in it is, um, is just think about life, right? Right now we're in a time of uncertainty. It's kind of like, well, rather than saying, you know, I, everything has looked this way for 2020 to be an incredible year. It's saying, you know what? What can I be grateful in? Am I allowing it to take into form in a different way? Whether it's like, I want to make this extra money. Well, you don't have to do it with the job you have, or you can make money different ways. It's just flexible in their approach. Prior to your filming, did you not have an injury? Yeah. So um, it was the week before flying down to California to compete. And I saw my coach. I said, hey, coach, you got any last minute tips for me? He said, yeah. Don't get hurt. And I'm thinking, dude, thank you, Captain Obvious, right? I yeah. mean, I already know that. And yeah. then literally a couple of days later, as I'm training, I land awkwardly and I snap my ankle. And my ankle grows the size of a softball. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. I, oh, man, there's no way I can compete anymore. All these negative self-talks went through my head. And I was thinking, man, my dream of competing on Ninja Warrior, my dream of being on national television, it's gone. And 
what helped me go into that moment is that that concept I shared earlier just was having an honest attitude rather than pretending like, no, it's all good. It's like, no, man, I was pretty distraught. I was upset. I was angry at myself. But when I gave my time to just to feel and work through the emotions, I was able to get to a clean slate and say, you know what? I can't change the situation now. So what do I do? So we literally did four hours of physical therapy, of laser therapy, chiropractic for four days until the end of the week where I flew down. I was able to jog. We taped it up and we ran through the course. You managed to actually go through the course? Uh, Adrenaline helped and um, ibuprofen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, hey, I didn't go this far to not. Okay. And did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? No, I didn't. Um, what I mean is this, where uh, it's, so there's there's 100 people that go to the city qualifiers and the top 30 advance to the city finals. Of course, my goal is to be the first one to conquer Mount Midoriyama in the United sure. States. And when I ran through the course, like the things that I was hoping was on the course was on there. Oh, like one of the things is two slack lines that kind of bounce. So I was like, oh man, my ankle. And then yeah. they had one was lache where you go from bar to bar and it was 10 feet apart. So you kind of fly like a monkey through the air. Yeah. And I remember like in practice, I would always crash and burn. And I was like, okay. oh my gosh, these two. But then one of the reminders I said, I just said to myself, Juan, 100%. You commit 100%. Yeah. So when I went through, I went through the, the little um, slack lines and I went through just like a slug. I just... So it took me like a minute to get through. Sure. It's funny. The crowd was cheering for me. And I think they got so tired, they stopped cheering. because I was <laughs> so, <sad. laughs> so after I get through the slack line and then I get to the bars, I just want to commit 100%. So I launched myself off, made to the bar, hopped off the bar into this cargo net. I'm climbing down. My right foot slips. So I kind of fall a little bit and I catch myself. I can feel the water graze the back of my shirt. So I can feel the wetness. Okay. I crawl underneath the net and then I dry my hand off. As I'm drying my hands, the camera zooms in on my rear end and they notice the wet spots. So the horn blows and it says I got disqualified. And I was thinking like, ah, oh, bummer, man. So I went off the course. I was bummed out. And when they interviewed me, I said, no, it's all good. Because one of the lessons one of my mentors shared with me is like, in life, you do your best, you forget the rest. And in that sense, it's like, what can you control? It's your effort. Did you give 100%? You can't ask for more. I said, you know, I did my best. I go home. I fall asleep. Three hours later, five o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call, unknown number. And usually when I get an unknown number, I usually let it go to voicemail. For whatever reason, I decided to pick it up. It says, hey, Juan, this is Jeff from American Ninja Warrior. We want to let you you left too early. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, we take everyone who made it to the end of the course. But if you don't make it, we take the people who made it the farthest afterwards. Mm -hmm. So out of all the people, you were number 30. Okay. So I scratched and I made it through the city. I said, we need to come back tonight to compete. And on television, the city finals and the city qualifying, it's usually like a month or six weeks because all the city qualifiers, all five cities circle back. But in real life, film it back to back because they're not going to set up this made equipment again. They can do it all at once. So I tape up my ankle, I run through the course. I get the same spot. I make it through. I enter the net with the breeze and then I go drum and I have fine monkey bars. So I, and then I peg the peg and what I noticed immediately it was different from the ones I've been practicing on. So my cousins were made out of like, like these one very slim, glossy, like hard plastic. Okay. So I'm coming and I'm kind of conserving my energy and then my hand slip. And I, I, I kind of swing and I catch back up my grip. I keep going, my hand slips again. This time my hand slips, I feel this blow. Can't fall, can't fall. And then my hand low. And I fell a couple feet away from popping off and then running up the wall. Um, split me my goal, but it goes back to the idea of do your best. Forget this. Mm. I had a, a, another mentor. It was very profound. He said, Juan, the purpose of every goal is not to achieve. The purpose of every goal is not to achieve your goal. Rather, the reason why you pursue your goals is because 
pursuing it, you'd be doing things you'd not normally do. And what happens is you do these new things, you gain this new confidence self, you make connections, you learn more about you. And what happens is, well or not, that's not the purpose. It's just pursuing and expanding your comfort zone and doing new things and achieving the goals that carry on top. And really profound effect for me because so many people, they have this idea of like, I need to make this amount of money to feel successful. I need to be in a specific relationship, feel loved. A kid can feel like I need to get an A so I, my parents think I'm smart. But when we attach like this needs to happen for me to feel this way, it's a very dangerous formula uh, because it's based on external things happening. So for me, I didn't achieve my overall goals, but for me, it was like I did all I could and I'm just grateful experience. You know, I've been contemplating whether to go again more time uh, at a hundred percent to see how far I can make it. Uh, of course, you know, priorities with marriage and life took over, but it's something that's in the back of my mind. Uh, and it's something that uh, consider pursuing the future, just saying, you know what, one last time, one last go around and see how far I can make it, and then we can continue to move on. I'm going to let you describe in your own words what you do. Yeah. Uh, so what I sent you was, um, or the, our bio usually says inspirational speaker. And I remember in, in college, it was a really big distinction for me because on motivation speaker, that, that terminology is commonly used but it also can have a negative connotation. And for how I interpreted words um, in, in university was motivate is that you are doing something for someone else uh, versus inspire is that it's kind of like being a light to shine something for someone. And they already have all of it. You're just being like a, a support or a catalyst to help spark that and remind them to reframe and they're doing all the work. So that's the reason why um, I associate more with uh, inspirational speaking than motivational speaking. For me, it's, you know, you say work, and a lot of people ask me, like, hey, do you still enjoy what you do? You've been doing this for over a decade now, and one of my closest friends, he's a real estate professional uh, down in California, he asked me, hey, do you still enjoy it? I'm like, it's not if I enjoy it or not. Like, one, the answer is yes, but it's not whether or not I do it. It's, it's a calling. It's like, mm. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And and for me, I knew it when I was 17 because I went to a conference and had a speaker and his message was creating your own destiny. And it was the first time ever in my life where I heard somebody share, you had a part in your success. It wasn't about your age, your background, what you know, what you don't know. It's about you and what you decide to do. And he impacted not only me, but 300 students. And every kid growing up says, you know, I just want to help people. I just know how on that moment. It clicked in my head. If I were to speak, I can help more people in my lifetime than just having one-on-one -on -one conversations. So I went from the idea of uh, making an impact. I followed that path. And kind of that example I share, it's kind of like figuring out your style of clothing, right? We go through these different phases. You look back and see, you know what? Think about middle school or junior high. Like, is there moments you regretted or you thought back and like, wait a minute, why did I dress that way? Or why did I have that certain hairdo? Right? <laughs> I, I think we right? all do. but it's through trial and error that you find out no this is cool now but it's not cool anymore and i think it's the same life like trying on clothes where the shirt doesn't fit well you put it back in the rack you're trying a different shirt it fits well not your color you put it back but then you try that third one it's the right fit and you and you buy it well for for me i think it's figuring out when people say what do you want to do well you gotta try on different outfits mm. and once you find that right one it's going to be a right fit and understands if you your style changes, I want to switch career paths or I want to switch this thing. It's okay. It's not like a, this is a finish line. It's done. And just for me, this has continued to be the vehicle for me to help people and to serve people. I chose economics where it took less amount of classes to graduate. Literally, it took like nine or ten less classes to get an economics degree compared to business. So I had tons of free time in university. So I took I took classes I enjoy. I took surfing. I took sailing. I took a psychology class, advertising class. I took all these things that would help round me out as an individual. But then I had this free time where I interned with one of the top sales motivational speakers like of all time. I interned with like business entrepreneurs and real estate investing. 
And then I got exposed to Tony Robbins. I went to his conference as a junior in college where I took this money. The university had reimbursed me and said, hey, you have too much financial aid. Here's $5,000. So I took half of it, $2,500, and I paid front row to see Tony Robbins. And I knew I wanted to work with Tony Robbins because for me, I felt he was the best speaker out there. And he shared material not only about succeeding financially or business, but in every in your life, your relationships, your health. So from there, when I graduated from university, I worked as a speaker for Tony Robbins. And a year after graduating from college in 2009, that's when I wrote my book and began my speaking career. Okay, so I was totally off on my notes then. So you, I, I thought you just attended Tony Robbins um, seminars, but you actually worked for him or with him uh, or for his company. Yeah, as a speaker like, for Tony can, Robbins. Can, can you clarify that? Like, so knowing that I wanted to work with Tony Robbins, when I went to his Unleash the Power event, mm -hmm. his, like, his introductory event, I literally connected my way into the company. I found like people who were doing what I did. I, I said, you know, I'm going to meet at least 25 people who works for the Tony Robbins company. I'm going to build relationships with these people. So by the time I was a senior in college, there's a group of guys who did front of the room speak to Tony Robbins, meaning they go into a city for three months and Tony Robbins would have a live event and they go into meetings, let's say for a real estate company during the sales meetings, they do a presentation. And at the end, they give you the opportunity to join to see Tony Robbins live. So these guys are doing this and said, yeah, I want to do that. So I made friends with them and one of them referenced me into the company and he gave me a shot. So when I graduated university, that was the only job I applied for. So in work for Tony Robbins, it really taught like if people can change their life, information's not going to change it. They have to put themselves in a completely different environment. So it taught me how to find out what is important to an individual and how to help them take action. So for example, I remember I was at a real estate company and I was talking to this uh, real estate bro and asked him, if there's areas you, know, you want to change this year, what would it be? He said, well, my finances, my health, and my relationship. By him saying that, it gave me the three areas in life that he is the most unsatisfied with or the areas happy. I said, of those three, if you can only change one that will have the biggest impact in your life, what would it be? And he said, my relationship with my wife. So I now know that his relationship is going well. I said, well, can you tell me more? He said, well, I've been married for 10 years. And kind of he says, it feels like we're coasting. And when in my listening tuned into like, it says they're just coasting. On, that's not a feeling. And he gave me a look into what he was feeling. And, well, if you keep coasting next year, five years or 10 years, what will happen to your marriage? He got very quiet. And I knew, I said, why don't you give this a try? Any bad guarantee, but marriage is not going well. And it's not going to end up good enough. Why not give your marriage a chance to see if this will help? And then for me, that came a place where eventually, and it taught me of how do you come from a place of integrity, right? You're not pushing someone to do something they don't want to do, but it's much where it's more of, hey, let me learn about you as a person. This is a right fit, great. If not, not. But give yourself an opportunity to change and change other people's lives. So that was the most valuable skill that I learned. Tony Robbins was really getting to the core of an individual through a series of questions. And one of the most powerful things I came to just to experience and go from head knowledge to, to understanding from a deeper level and applying it. Every time you go to a state of fear of worry, you're not in the present moment. Your future, what if this happens? What if this happens? Yeah. Or thinking about the past, it might be a trigger for some people, right? I and mean, people, they, they did interviews with people from the Great Depression. And they, they're skipping because like, oh my gosh, because I've lost so much money. Millennials, people, I'm on the tail end. 2008, they see the crash. There's no coincidence where now home purchases, I know in the States, it's like a lot of people are waiting till later to have families. They're not buying home as much. They can't afford it where it is, but trauma change your behavior. And I think when you talk about fear, it can come out of places, right? It can root it in itself, but it's that kind of like, wait a minute, 
for me personally, it's constantly choosing faith over fear. It's realizing, hey, everything's always worked out. And I think strategic coach, what's really valuable, it helps you to write it out on paper. Right? If you're scared, nervous, you got to let that energy out. And I think journaling or just like having a to write, you get to empty out your mind so you can fill it with something else. Otherwise, you just go vicious cycle. You're like, oh my gosh, well, if this, well, if you write a paper, you look at, it, you know what? Not that. Bad. But again, fear is in the full present, but more you're kind of focused towards the future. Personally, for me, there's people have different views. I, I don't live with regrets. I don't like, oh man, I probably shouldn't have done that. Right. Or like, oh man, I would, I could have done it differently. But I do. I'm convicted. Believe that. Let's say I didn't stop with Tony Robbins and I kept. I I may not get on this strict directory where I may be. There's some people I knew who've worked with Tony Robbins in that role for like eight to ten years. And that's a role where literally every three months you go from different, you uproot and you go to a different place. And for me, it's like, I could not imagine living that lifestyle because that's not good for a successful family life. So for me, there's a series of events, just like cool moments in life, as I shared earlier about subtle thoughts, um, gambling challenges that happen to family members that, oh, man, I didn't, it wasn't enjoyable, but I know there, there is a there's greater purpose in it happening. So. No regrets at all is more of just this extreme gratitude and being able to work for the Tony Robbins company straight out of college and to go to all the seminars while in university, make that decision, that leap of faith. When people talk about character and reputation, it's like not what people view, it's how you view yourself in the mirror at night. It's like, I mean, think about your boys and I think about my future kids. Like I feel a very heavy responsibility where if I'm going to go speak, I'm going to live out my message. And I'm going to do what is right from my integrity point of view, not because people are seeing me, but it's because how I feel inside. Yeah. I think that's one of the most difficult parts uh, in life is making sure like if there's people you need to make amends to say, so, you know what? I apologize for that. Or, Hey, I need some help. And I think one of the most difficult things I, for me, and I've constantly evolved working is the forgiveness. And I think that's what it all comes down to in the end is, as we go crazy times, that's this new normal is making sure it all begins with us. If you're in the right mind space, the right heart space, things a lot easier. But when things are disturbed here, what it's revealing, you got to work on that because when you work on yourself, then you can have a better impact on people. And the analogy I like to use is it's kind of like our cell phone where a lot of people have their phones dying. I know I'm at 34% because I've been using Zoom and not plugged in. What happens is we have apps that are running our lives that drain our energy, children, work, family, all these things take energy, but a lot of times people don't plug themselves in at night and there's no way you can give a hundred percent when you're only running on 3%. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that during this time is that people take care of themselves and they take care of other people because we're on this journey together uh, through this in certain times. Very well said, and I think uh, I've got a couple more questions for you, uh, more short ones, and then we'll we'll wrap up. I want to be yeah. respectful of your time. I, I appreciate you uh, joining yeah. me anyways. Um, Let's do rapid you, fire. Yeah, you know I'm a fan of Tim Ferriss. It's, you know, yeah. it's where I get it from. So a couple, a couple rapid fire questions. You don't have to think too hard about it. Just what was your worst job ever? Worst job ever, delivering phone books. Oh my God. <laughs> I ran to very wealthy neighborhoods where I'd run up 20, uh, 20 30 feet hills, I had 10 phone books in each arm. I got paid, I think, 20, 25 cents a phone book. Yeah. Is that where those arms were built? It was uh, phone book delivery? <laughs> hey, bro, it was built, built with phone books, dude. If, right. uh, too bad no, no young person knows about it now. But I like when I speak to adults and I share that, it was like to have a good chuckle. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, that that sounds terrible. <laughs> um, what podcast do you recommend the most? Oh man, podcast. I um, I guess the one that comes to mind now is the Joe Rogan podcast because I'm big okay. into MMA. And he brings okay. a lot of interesting people from all realms of life. If you could give your 20 year old self a piece of advice, what would it be? If I give my 20 year self a piece of advice, I'd say. Continue to be humble and hungry. Okay. 
That's a good place to end it. Uh, other than that, where can people find you? What are your social handles? Where, where, where can people yeah, find uh, Juando? Yeah, so uh, Juando.com, spelled H-O-A-N-D-O.com. And then if they type in just my name, Juando, into social media, you'll find me there. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all, all the feels, yeah. And TikTok, if you on there too. Oh, TikTok, oh, yeah. Well, you are the younger crowd. You're, you're younger. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll tell you, I, I am part of the young crowd, but technology, that's part of me. If I have to evolve too because yeah. I have to understand what they're going through. And I know when I have kids, there'll be a new platform and I don't want to do it, but I have to lean into it. Just like we have to lean into this new stuff, you know? Well, because you do a lot of, of speaking at colleges, right? Like that would probably be your major demographic. College, high speak, school. But, yeah, okay. So you you have to put yourself in that mindset. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, Juan, thank you very much. It is always a pleasure. Thank you much, my friend. Thanks awesome. very much. Take care, right? Take care. Say hi to your wife for me. Bye-bye. Yeah.